if you want to send out emails or notifications on some sort of schedule or renewal basis or perform some sort of task on some sort of renewal basis, you're going to want to check this one out. Welcome to our channel where you will learn how to save hours of your time every single week. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach Stevenson. I am a business processes and no code consultant. If you have questions about streamlining your processes, send me a message or book a free consult using the link in the description below. So in your smart suite workspace, you're going to create a new solution. We'll create one from scratch and you can name it whatever you want. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to delete all of the default fields here. So what we're going to be doing, I am going to take a one app or one table and call it clients. And we're going to create a second app and call it orders. Uh, basically what we're going to do is have the client application look at the most recent order and then on some sort of uh, predefined renewal basis, whether it's one year, two years, six months, whatever you choose, um, at that point in time, once the order or once the task, whatever it is, uh, has come due, uh, then at that point in time, a notification, an email, or whatever action you want to take within the automation uh, will be scheduled to run. So once you've deleted all of your predefined or default fields, uh, you can create the first application and we will call it clients. And while I already have these deleted, I will duplicate this app and I will call this one orders. Okay, from here, we can start setting up all our fields. So what we may want is something like a name, maybe a phone number, email address, and that's the contact info to get started. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up our renewal fields. So what we may need to do is enter uh, the renewal length. So whether it's six months or a year or two years, et cetera. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a number field and I'm just going to call this amount. And then I'm going to set up a single select field. I will call it renewal type. And whether the renewal is in months or years. And then in the default section here, I will say years. In this case, you can set it up any way you want. But basically what we're looking at is the amount here that you enter. If you say six, and then you can set this one up for months, or if you put it in for two and it's supposed to be two years, then you can select uh, the years from the drop down there. So you have a little bit more flex, uh, flexibility. From there, we can set up the next field. Uh, this will help us with some of our logic. Um, so what I will call this one is a, or I'll create a formula field and then I can call it dual term in months and we're going to convert it to months if it's in years. So we'll just write a if statement and we're going to be looking at the renewal type and you want to put two equal signs and if it's years, then 12 else one. And one last field to set up for at this moment is a linked records field. And we want to link to the orders app and we will leave, um, allow linking to multiple records on. And we can go over to our orders field now, uh, in the fields to display, there should be the link to clients already set up so we can turn that on. This is just simple. You can set it up however you want, depending on what your needs are. But I'm just going to call this order notes. And we will bring in a date field as well and call it purchase date. And then under the title, we are going to modify that, create it as an auto generated field. We're going to bring in the link to the client as the name, and we're going to bring in the purchase date as the uh, record ID rather. So now that we have that set up, uh, go back to clients and we can change the ID field. And I'm just going to bring in the full name. 
So now we can set up a record. Put in any name. Put in the email address. And the renewal term default to two years. You'll see how that is brought in. Renewal term in months is showing 12 because it's pulling in the years. So the last thing that we need to do, go into the modified fields, we need to multiply by the amount field. So now we can see that it's a two-year renewal, which is 24 months. If I change this to months, it'll just show you the two here. Now that is all set up, and there's just two more fields that we need to set up in the client's table or app, and it is another formula. We should call this latest purchase date. And so we're going to use a max function, and we're going to look at the orders, link to orders field. You're going to want to use the dot, type in purchase date, Bring that in. So we're looking up the most recent purchase date from linked orders. Is basically what that formula is doing. And the last one is also another formula. And we want to use the next renewal date. Is what we're going to calculate. We want to use a date add function here. And we're going to add. And this is the syntax here. We're going to add the latest purchase date plus the renewal term in months. And because we have uh, converted it to months, we want to use the months unit here. So now that we have the client set up, we have the entire structure set up. Now we can create an order. So in the linked orders, we will just create a new record. And here I call this whatever you want. I'm just going to put in item one, two, three, and the purchase date can be today. I will save that. And it's going to calculate the dates for us. So the latest purchase date is April 18th. The next renewal date is April 18th, 2025, which is two years from now. And now for the automation purpose, I am going to change this to make it activate today. And back in the orders, I will change one month ago. Okay, so now we can see that the next renewal date is actually today. Latest purchase date was March 18th. So what I am doing here is I'm just forcing it to pick up today as the automation date. So now what we're gonna do is go over to automations, or create an automation. When a record matches a condition, so when next renewal date is today, we will do the next step, which is send an email. So this is where you can set it up to do whatever you want. If there's some other action that you need it to do, uh, you can go ahead and do that. But for this use case, what we're going to do is we're going to send an email to the client. You can Include your own email address in the BCC so that you can be notified that an email was sent out to your client and add to the message whatever you want as well. And that's it for basic automation. I'll turn that on and you will see in a moment here um, I may have to force that to activate. So in a moment here, I should receive an email. You see, I just got an email with the subject and bringing in the date. So that's basically a simple way of setting up some sort of renewal or schedule system and bringing in dates to the relevant client.